Good morning, River of Life. It's Jolene Felbrick here for uh, Tuesday of Thanksgiving week, take five. Um, I'm coming to you today, um, and I'm super glad it is Thanksgiving week because God's been showing me some things about having a thankful heart as of late. I titled this, Absence Makes the Heart Grow Fonder, because as we know, many of us are entering a week where we're going to be with friends or family, maybe people we haven't seen for a long time, and sometimes we need that absence to actually get us to a place where we can be um, in the same room with somebody <laughs> or just thankful for that person or looking forward to seeing them again. Um, but sometimes absence does make the heart grow, grow fonder. Um, but I believe that in our situation with the Lord, with our relationship with God, it does not make the absence, or absence does not make our heart grow fonder towards God. And sometimes we might be in a dry spot where it feels like God is far away or he's not in our everyday life. And oftentimes that can just be because he's been absent or we've been absent from life with him. Um, a lot of us know 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing, right? God says, pray without ceasing. What does that actually mean? That just means living our life every day with his fingers, letting his fingers flow through everything that touches us and realizing it and, and, praying and doesn't mean hiding in a prayer closet or uh, on your knees 24 7 even though there are times in our life where maybe that is what god is calling us to do highly unusual for everyday living most of the time god is just calling us to invite him into everything we're doing driving down the road just remembering him asking what he thinks about something god what do you think about that or asking him to have give you eyes that see like he does so that you can see the world with the compassion that he does and in, in a different light than, than we normally would in our human flesh. But I wanna go back to 1 Thessalonians 5 because right before 17, verse 17, verse 16 says, rejoice always. Just a very simple command, rejoice always. And that can be very, very hard uh, in the world that we live in right now, but it ties so great with the next two verses, 16, 17, 18. He says, rejoice always pray without ceasing, and 18 says, giving thanks in all circumstances. Those three things. He says, for this is the will of Christ Jesus for you. I just feel like if we can get our hands and our eyes around what that actually means, put our hearts in there too, that if we can pray, rejoice always, no matter what the circumstance is, just realizing God is in it and saying, I submit it to you, God. I'm just going to give it to you. That's our prayer that we start to pray without ceasing. When fear rises up, when circumstances seem to be tearing us down, um, whatever it might be, we're going to rejoice anyway. He asks us and tells us to do that. We're going to rejoice anyway. We're going to pray through it. That's our prayer right there. Just our rejoicing can be a prayer. God, I'm going to give it to you. I submit this mess to you. I'm going to lay this fear down at your feet. I'm going to give you my worry. I'm not going to do I'm not going to grab it on my own. And I'm in return going to take from you, Lord, a heart of thanksgiving. He will give it to you if you lay down whatever it is you need to give to him in order to be filled with thanksgiving. It is a great exchange, this relationship with God. This, um, it's a two-way street. That's what's so beautiful about it. And the sooner we all get our head around that, the more victory we're going to have in our everyday living where we are going to be able to rejoice because we give him whatever it is we need to give him so we can say, okay, Lord, I'm open and available to receive a heart of thanksgiving. He will give that to you today in this season, no matter what, but you got to actually give it to him. It's a two-way street. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. You can't just say, Lord, just give me a thankful heart. He's going to require something. He's going to require you to give up something to submit whatever you're holding on to that is possibly giving you, um, you're walking around with maybe a spirit of lack or burden on you. He's like, give it to me. Just lay it down. I will then give you a heart of thanksgiving. You will be able to rejoice always when you have this pray without ceasing. That means taking captive whatever thought that is. If you laid down fear and you find that fear is piling up again as you're on your way to your family gathering, lay it back down. Say, God, here it is. Give me a heart of thanksgiving for the people that I'm going to be with today, for the season that I'm in. Um, and then I do feel like God is just saying that for those of you that are really in a stormy season, that are really 
struggling to see Thanksgiving in anything, if you really are just getting squeezed from all sides, whatever this might be, whatever the pressure is in your life right now, or the thing that you're having a hard time seeing through, I just want you to remember, um, I feel like God, Ann Voskamp has a great book about Thanksgiving. And in it, she talks about how there is, she's from a farmer family, but she talks about how there is no harvest without a storm. And so I do want to remind you today that if you are going through something that is just squeezing you harder than you could ever imagine, if you do lay this at God's feet and you do trust him through this storm, he is building something greater in you. He will be able to polish you. He will be able to grow something inside of you that will produce a beautiful harvest if you trust him with it. So hang in there, okay? Happy Thanksgiving week, everyone. I'm just gonna pray us out. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for um, the fact that you want to be in relationship with us, that you are always interested in where we are in life. I pray right now against the lie of the enemy that you don't care because God, you do care. You care so much. Um, and so I just praise you for each person that is watching today. I ask that you will give us a heart of thanksgiving and that you will put in us what it takes to hand back to you those things that we're holding on to, preventing us from fully being able to rejoice in you. In your precious name, amen. Happy Thanksgiving week. Have a great one.